Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rentway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for May 9th, 2023. Well, yesterday we spent just kind of spinning around going nowhere on the day as we seemingly were waiting for the CPI number, which doesn't come out till Wednesday. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of regional bank selling going on, creating a little bit of uncertainty. It looks like that might be continuing this morning. So what does all that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Let's take a peek at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market for today. Well, as you can see here in the diamonds chart, this has been one nasty, choppy, price range you can see if we go clear back over here we kind of entered this range over here november last year we've popped out a couple of times to the top side we've popped down a few times here to the bottom side but overall the predominant um, price action has been locked in that range for multiple months and you can see we're still locked in that range here today unfortunately yesterday we left maybe the possibility of a little lower high you can see we made a high here we made a lower low and this would constitute as a possible lower high now i don't know if we can gain a whole lot out of that because volume was so low yesterday but we will want to pay attention to this because we are seeing a follow through this morning so if those um, bulls were to find inspiration i would suggest another retest of resistance up in here to see if we can push on through based on the data that we see today. If the bears find inspiration, well, I'm gonna look for another retest down here into this support area um, in the chart. As you can see, we've got some nice price support across this area and that pullback into that area could be critical. If we can find that area and hold, then we're in pretty good shape. If we find that area and slip down through, that would be a little bit of a problem and maybe there would be a reason for that um, if the regional banks continue to sell and notice that we could come back down there and test that 50-day moving average here on the diamonds if that were the case if we take a look at our uh, spy well not quite as bearish a situation here in the market notice that we have a double bottom here but we had this high that came in just ever so slightly high and you can see once again we spent an awful lot of time chopping in this range on the spy but the spy um, incorporates a lot more of the big techs um, and, and big tech has kind of been the story this earnings season so now the question is going to be how this will continue to react if we can find a little bit of bullish price action here in the market i would not rule out the possibility of retest of this resistance high maybe right in here the last couple of days and if we can push through that maybe just a little bit higher to test the upside of that price range if those bears were to find inspiration today well you'll notice right through here there's a little bit of price support maybe we can hold that price support area and maybe the low of our friday candle that reversal candle if those bears were to get involved however if they were to break that low of the friday candle then we might look for a gap fill and then even a test on lower back down here to test the lower side of that range um, let's take a look at our qqq our qqq as you can see has been the strongest of the indexes it remained strong last night interest or i mean yesterday uh, trying to push up here and break through that resistance area in the chart maintaining its bullish trend but we had an issue last night where Hong Kong um, had some pretty heavy selling last night. And now we're seeing just a little hint of bearishness here this morning on the QQQ. Could it consolidate here? That might be the, the 
pattern we consolidate and then go ahead and push on out it's also possible we could pull back in here and maybe start to lose some of that trend we'll have to wait and see but big tech has certainly been the strongest of the indexes so if the bulls can find inspiration i'm going to suggest we pop on through that area right there and that would be a pretty big breakout here for the market now remember a breakout here doesn't necessarily mean we're going to rip to the upside we've seen breakouts before where we'll pop through and then completely reverse so kind of keep an eye on that i would also suggest that the qqq is is the most overbought with pe ratios that are extremely high on those big techs so we'll want to be careful we're paying an awful lot for one dollar worth of earnings uh, right now in some of those big techs and if those bears were to find some kind of energy here today well maybe a test back down into this area here to test the, su the support of that big friday move and the support of this price action in the chart let's take a look at our iwm iwm also finding some bearishness here this morning and kind of a dark cloud cover and iwm has been the most bearish uh, market in or index in the market and you can see we're running across this downtrend here uh, running into lots of pressure on that big resistance area in this chart so that dark cloud cover may be following through this morning to the downside um, watch that closely if the bulls find inspiration well maybe we press back up here and see if we can press that resistance level again um, in the chart if those bears continue to find inspiration well perhaps a fill of this gap this friday gap may be possible it wouldn't take a whole lot to slip down below that friday low the way the market's looking right now and if that were the case then we still have that possibility we could retest the support lows here in IWM once again. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX, interestingly enough, with everything going on yesterday, VIX acted like nothing was happening here. There was no fear, no nothing in the market at all. We continue to pull back. We're uh, close the day below 17 handles here in the VIX. And again, the VIX continues to act very oddly anymore, so much so that the CBE has come out with a new product, um, a, 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 a one-day VIX product. And the reason is, is because of the huge trading that's happening in zero day to expiration options, creating some funky price action in here in the standard VIX. So watch that carefully. If those um, uh, bulls were to find inspiration here today, well, then maybe we push on down and retest some of these support levels down in here on the VIX. If the bears find inspiration, well, first thing I would do is say, come back up here and test this resistance level in the chart. And if that pops, um, then maybe we move a little bit higher. If we take a look at our T2122. Now, T2122 is a, something I get more questions about than probably anything else. People ask the question, where can I find T2122? The only place I know that you can find T2122 indicator is in the TC2000 package. And if you guys are interested in TC2000, if you look on my YouTube channel, I have a, a tutorial um, set on TT2000 where you can catch a link. I have a discount link to it if you have an interest in maybe giving it a try. Now, if you take a look here on T2122, it is nothing more than the four week new high, new low ratio. So what we're doing is we're going out looking at all the stocks making new highs, all the stocks making new lows, creating a ratio here in the market. And I plot, the, plot this as a simple line and it's plotted between a 100 and a zero level in the chart. And and I use a 90 and a 10 just to kind of show me that upper range and the lower range. And I call this upper range the bearish reversal zone, the lower range the bullish reversal zone. And if you look across this chart, what we can see, it doesn't tell us direction of the market. What it does do is it gives us these very clear places where we may be overbought and we should start looking for selling to come into play maybe take some profits on those long trades that we're holding and it tells us when we're 
in that oversold region and we should start expecting that bounce to the upside where we can take some profits on some short trades or maybe actually pick up some long positions in the market so watch that closely now when we're kind of in the middle of the range here it doesn't really give us a clear direction on what happens today now we can glean some information from trends and things like that in in the chart but more importantly what what it tells us is if the bulls find inspiration today then we certainly have upside opportunity. So if we can find some kind of inspiration here to get the market going to the upside, then we've got room for that to occur. If the bears find inspiration, it's also showing us that we have significant downside opportunity if they those bears really were to engage on some kind of worry in the market. We've got plenty of potential move to the downside. If we take a look at our T2108, now T2108 is more specific. It is the percentage of stocks above the 40 day moving average. And I don't know why they pick the 40 day, but they pick the 40 day. If it were me, it would be the 50 day. But what this does is tells us how many stocks are above or below their 40 day moving average. And you can see in this chart, it develops trends, support, and resistance levels in the chart as well. So if I were to drop a line across here, you can see there's a fairly significant level of price resistance right across here. And right now we have about 46% of the stocks holding above their 40 day moving average. If this resistance plays in, in to the cards here, then that possibility that we could pull back from that resistance as we've done before here just recently is possible if we were to pop through that would be the bulls engaging pushing through to the upside and then maybe we start looking for more upside in the chart if those bears engage and push down well then we start looking for the next support levels in this chart and you can see we have a pretty good support level here where we've bounced off multiple times even in the past bounced off of that trying to hold this market higher now the t2107 indicator very simple is the percentage of stocks holding above the 200 day and you can see we've got a pattern in here these patterns by the way do play out just the same way um, we have a potential head and shoulders pattern showing up here in this chart and unfortunately we're also dealing with a bit of a downtrend here in the way the price action has been um, moving in the t this um, this sector so this is the percentage of stocks above their 200 day moving average and you can see that we've been struggling with some price resistance here in this chart um, running into a little bit of a problem and if the uh, so if the bulls if the bulls find inspiration today maybe a retest up into that downtrend area and that resistance in the chart and if the bears find inspiration well you can see we've got a little bit of support in this chart you got that little support area across here that'll be the key support if we can test and hold that we're probably going to be good if we were to dip below there that's where we start maybe seeing a little bit of fear come into the market let's take a look at our t2101 and t2101 might be one of the harder indicators to um, understand this is the absolute breadth index and it's going to show us changes in the market based on um, the the uh, buying and selling breadth that we see in the market and it doesn't have anything to do with a specific um, trend what it's doing is showing us momentum and you can see right now as of yesterday our momentum kind of just died on the vine we went flat in here and what we often see is when it hooks like this um, as we push up into a chart like that, if it hooks like this, then we could see that pressure once again to um, to the side of the market. Remember, it's not; it doesn't tell us whether we're bullish or bearish. But since we have recently made a high in the market, and now we're pulling back, it's showing us that that pressure may come to the downside here. So keep a close eye on that. Then let's take a look at our T, whoops, no, nope, let's not do that. Let's take a look at our economic calendar here for today. Our economic calendar has a little bit going on in here, but not much to really be all that worried about. As you can see, we've got some 
uh, NFIB um, Small Business Optimism Report. Um, keep an eye on that one. It's not known for moving the market at all. Um, we have uh, two Fed speakers here today. And then we have a three-year note auction. So pretty boring day on the economic calendar. But what everybody's going to be thinking about, what they were thinking about yesterday, is what comes next in our CPI report on Wednesday. Keeping in mind, we've got mortgage applications coming up, Atlanta business um, inflation expectations. We've got petroleum status. 10-year note auction and a treasury statement tomorrow. So a little bit bigger day on the way, and that's probably creating a little bit of uncertainty um, as we kind of wait uh, to see where our inflation reading is going to come in. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today, and our earnings calendar is a busy one, guys. There, there's no way I can cover all of the reports in the earnings calendar. So if you click the link just below the title of the video, it'll take you back to the morning blog where you can catch that full list of notables. Um, whoops, Airbnb, whoops. Airbnb will be reporting today. Keep an eye on that one. We're going to hear from AKAM. We're going to hear from a Boot. We're going to hear from Clean Energy. We've got um, Electronic Arts um, going to report today. We're going to hear from the Grocery Outlet. We've got Twinkie on the list here today, Hostess Brands. We're going to hear from Mankind in a report. We're going to hear from NKLA. We're going to get numbers from PAYO. We're going to hear from TOST. We're going to hear from UAA. And we're also going to get a report from Win Casinos today. So keep an eye on these reports. There's quite a few of them. The thing is, there's probably not the kind of reports that gives us that really big market changing boost in the list of numbers today. And certainly it's going to be important if you're holding that stock, but may not move the market substantially today. Let's take a quick look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who does take the time to leave a brief message. And heck, you can just leave an emoji if you want. That actually Actually counts and if you go through and thumbs up and comment on other folks's comments on on the video that also um, helps that engagement you know it, it, it takes quite a bit of time to put these videos together so I do appreciate all the kind support to um, to the effort so thank you so much let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up and uh, remember guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security make sure you do your own due diligence never blindly follow anyone else's trade idea make sure you're working within your trade tolerances and your trading rules let's take a look at something that could affect uh, the market here today more than anything else and that might be um, this regional banking situation you can see we had a pretty steep rally whoops that went to a two-day we had a pretty steep rally on Friday unfortunately what we ended up doing yesterday is we left behind a bearish engulfing candle in that chart and now we're seeing maybe a little bit of follow through this morning to the downside I would watch this one pretty closely if we start picking up in the selling of the regional banks that's going to create some substantial pressure here on the market if we see those sellers coming back in and there's there's no change from anything out there the federal reserve anything out there that would relieve that pressure at the moment so keep a close eye on that now another thing that's been really interesting to pay attention to is the u.s dollar the u.s dollar has been pretty volatile here bouncing around in a range this morning we see the u.s dollar reversing to the upside again we've been stuck in this this little range in here um looking for um some place to go now when the dollar strengthens we typically see 
um, some weakness in the market and we particularly weakness in um, commodity prices so we'll want to kind of keep an eye on that because as the dollar strengthens that usually has a negative effect on gold but with the worry that we have on regional banks there seems to be a pretty big flight to safety here so keeping an eye here on gold you can see in the pre-market we're pushing to the upside now I would suspect that we should get some rest or consolidation more rest or consolidation in this because this is a pretty steep rally that we had in here maybe a little bit more rest but that change could occur if those banks continue to sell off, that's going to raise some fear and people are running to a little bit of safety in the market. You might also um, keep a close eye on whoops, silver. Now, another way that you can go and something that I personally own right now is PHYS. PHYS is a physical gold. Um, you, when you can go to their website and check it out, but you're actually buying physical gold, where GLD is just kind of like paper gold. Um, it's it's um, the, you're actually your name is on a little bit of gold that they hold at PHYS. So keep an eye on PHYS and uh, PSLV, and if nothing else, it's a nice hedge to the fear. Um, um, running around the market. Another place that you can look that's been really pretty darn remarkable um, is the whoops is the um, defensive sector stocks. Now defensive sector stocks are those old boring companies. They're very mature companies um, old, boring, dividend-paying type stocks, but my goodness, have they been strong. Take a look at Kimberly Clark. Looking very, very good here, consolidating after a substantial breakout here in, in the chart, and that opportunity that this could move on higher certainly looks like it's setting up here. Keep an eye on KMB. Take a look at Walmart. Walmart is another defensive sector stock trying to push on up and maybe retest this resistance up here to see if it can break out on Walmart. It's certainly holding a nice level of support. I think it is worth keeping an eye on. You might want to take a look at some very old boring stocks like uh, Colgate Palmolive. Big stretch to the upside, breaking through resistance. If you're a cup and handle trader, well, my goodness, um, when have you seen a cup of that size? If that were to rest out here, I would look for that next um, opportunity to move on up on CLX. Um, Mondelez, Mondelez, another great pattern as these defensive sector stocks remain um, super strong, breaking through, um, holding support areas, looking like it wants to move on higher here in that defensive sector stock. Now, one of the reasons there's such a move here, I think, in this is, again, the same story as gold. Everyone is looking for a little bit of safety. They're looking for that safe place where they can park some money, make some dividend yields, don't have to worry so much about this crazy volatility or whether or not the market's just going to tank. Now, if the market were to tank, I would suspect these will come down with that. But just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, there's a lot of strength in this sector. So because this video is long, I'm going to cut it off here. I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for listening. I do appreciate it. I want to wish you all the very best, and I'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Have a great day.